this is Sandeep. In this week's Workout Wednesday challenge, uh, you uh, you need to create a, a custom visual using Deneb. Uh, Deneb is a declarative visualization tool in Power BI. Um, it's not yet available in the official uh, app source in Power BI, uh, but uh, I think uh, it will be available in a couple of months. Um, I will add the description of uh, or the link to this page, um, as well as um, the, the creator of Deneb, uh, Daniel Patrick Marsh, he recently did a video on uh, how to use Deneb and the features of Deneb. So I'll add a, a link to that in the video description as well. Um, so this lets you create very powerful visualizations within um, Power BI. Um, and there are multiple ways to create this using the visual editor, the Vega visual editor. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it uh, is slightly different. Um, I use Power BI and Python together a lot. Uh, and I use the Altair library, uh, which is built on Vega. So I'll show you how I do it in Python and how I use it in my own workflow. Uh, and if you use currently use Python, you may find it easier to just create these visualizations in Altair. Let's get started. So for this challenge, um, you need to use the data source uh, financials data set and the goal is to create rather simple visuals. So you need to create a line chart and you also need to create uh, a bar chart. Now this is simple, uh, but as if you want to create more advanced uh, visuals uh, using Deneb and Vega, uh, the, the workflow that I'm gonna show you, uh, you'll, you'll see that uh, you can use that to create the visualizations outside of Power BI using Jupyter Notebook and Python. Um, and then just import that into uh, Power BI very easily and build very highly customizable visuals uh, there. So for this data set, the, the financials data set, I'm not entirely sure with the, where the data set is. Um, this, I went to the Power BI samples gallery. Uh, it's, I don't see anything financials, but I'm gonna use something that is similar or, and shouldn't matter. So I'm gonna use a similar data set so I downloaded this sales and marketing sample um, data set uh, from Power BI's uh, website. And the data set is fairly uh, representative of what we want to do. So there is a, a geo table. So this is a dimension table that has region. Then there is a date table uh, with all the date columns. And then there are a bunch of uh, um, measures that have also been created um, already uh, by, by, by Power BI. And um, what we want to do now is I want to get this data um, from Power BI and then import it, it into uh, Jupyter Notebook. I, I usually have Jupyter Notebooks. I've already installed uh, Jupyter Notebook and I've created an external tool or, or created a Jupyter Notebook external uh, tool plugin here. In this case, um, it, um, it's easier if I create the data because this is an aggregated data. It's, it's easier and it's coming from multiple different data sources or other tables um, and it has measures in it. Um, it's easier if I just created to create the data here in Power BI and then import that into uh, Jupyter Notebook. And there are lots of ways, different ways to do it. Um, I'm going to show you a quick way out of how I create temporary tables um, in Power BI and then import it into uh, Jupyter Notebook. So what we want to do here is I want a date. We don't want the hierarchy. I just want the date. So we want this and we want, let's say, the region column. And I also want the sales. Um, let's rename this to sales. And so we have date, region, and sales. And I want to import this uh, aggregated uh, data into a Jupyter Notebook. Um, and I'm gonna create a calculated uh, table uh, based on this. And the way I do that is let's first create a, um, I just want to reduce the size of the data here. Um, doesn't matter how big or small it is. We just want something that's representative in our Jupyter Notebook. Um, and then we'll, we'll remap this to the, uh, the actual data set. So I'm going to go to um, the performance analyzer. So click on performance analyzer, start recording. 
and I just move this slicer a little bit uh, to create the sample and then stop. And then it generates the DAX query for me for that table, right? So I copy that query. So the query is copied. And now we want to create, um, we want to create the uh, new table. So I go to new table and then copy. This is a table that I want to create and then paste and then just remove the define from here, convert evaluate to return. And we don't want these last two rows of order by, so I'm going to comment those out. And when I click, click on the check mark, it should create me a temporary table that I need for my purposes. So now I have a table that has the product ID, date, um, not this one, yeah, table, um, and then is grand total and, and sales. <clears throat> so first let me, this date table, I don't want date time, I want date. So let's go to date, and then I want this to be in MMDD YYY. Doesn't matter, but just for convenience purposes, and let me, and this sales, I'm going to rename that column to sales. And I'm also going to make it as a decimal number and remove the comma. Okay, so now we have everything we need. We have the date, region. I don't need this. So I'll get rid of, uh, oh, because this is calculated a table. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but let's say date, region, this, um, and the sales. So we're all good. What I'm going to do now is just copy this table. So copy the table. And I already have a Python uh, Jupyter notebook uh, that I've started here. So we will need import pandas, of course. So let's do pandas as td. And I also need Altair library. You can just do pip install Altair. And we'll import that in alias that as alt. So let's do that. Now we need to import that data. So I'll go PD, a panda start read from the clipboard because we copied that table. Um, it's into the memory now, right? So PD, pandas dot PD and read clipboard. So actually let's go back here. Now this looks like a data from all the way from 2019 to 2002. If we do want to reduce the data, uh, we can say, let's say this is before uh, 06 or maybe 12, 12, 30, 1999. Okay, just to reduce the size of the data. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that one more time, copy table here and then I'll, and now if we see, we have that data in Jupyter Notebook. We don't need uh, this column right over here. So I'm gonna get rid of that, so that I only want, um, I want all the rows, but I only want to use this first, second, and zero, one, two, three, the third column, right? The sales column. We won't, don't, don't want the, the grand total column. So we have that. If I look at the, uh, the column types, the first the date is an object. Uh, we want to convert that into uh, a date time. So df date is equal to df for the pd dot to date time and this would be date. And we will also need to um, reset. Let's let's take a look at. It. So we have that now. So df of info. So date is in now this format. Let's take a quick look at uh, the data. Okay, now if you see the date is uh, 09 and 11 and 09, so it's not sorted. So we'll just need to sort the data. So sort values. And then what do we want to sort? We want to sort the date. And then we'll also need to reset the index. And to true 
and df dot head again. Yep, so it is sorted now in the right order. And so this should be all good. Now we want to start with uh, the line chart uh, first. So let's start with line chart. And for the line chart, the, the API for the Altair uh, um, for Altair is it's pretty simple. We start with Alt always, so we start with Alt. What do we want to create? We want to create a chart. Which data source we want to use? DF is the data source we want to use. And what type of chart do we want to create? We want to create a line. So mark line and I want to encode, meaning you want to pass which variables that you want to pass. So on my X axis, I want to use uh, the sales column from this, uh, or rather on the X axis, there should, should be the date. And what type of a column is it? Is it's temporal, so I say T. There are three types, temporal, um, ordinal, and, and then quantitative. So this is a temporal type. And then on the Y axis, on the y-axis is actually the sales. So that would be sales and what type of it is, it's quantitative. And let's do, let's do this. Yeah, so we have what we need. The reason why it's so jagged is just because we have multiple values, right? So we have, we've not aggregated the data yet, but that will be aggregated, nothing to worry about. We'll aggregate that in Power BI. This is just to generate the visual that we want. So. For 715, we have three values, right? So that's why it's showing it uh, like this. Now, if you uh, look at this, th this is not interactive. We can make that interactive very easily. So just dot interactive and will be interactive, meaning you can just zoom in, zoom out now and watch the X axis. As I zoom in, it shows me the date, the, the, the month, um, the year as well, because we defined it as um, a temporal axis or temporal data type. It's uh, it already cal it calculates um, the, the hierarchy for us. You know, also grab um, the, the data on the Y axis is sales, on the X axis is date. So this is good. Now how do we get this into uh, Power BI? You click on these three dots and then go to view source. So we have the source here, just grab this, control C, go to Power BI, go to Power BI, and we have already created, or have already imported the, uh, the Deneb visual here. You can go to the website that I'll post a link in the video description, but go there and we click here. So that's Deneb, and what do we want to um, plot on this graph? So we'll want the date column that goes here, we'll reduce the date. And we will also need the sales, which I'm gonna, let's do sales, okay? And as soon as you drop that, we'll go here and then say edit. And let's create an empty. So I created empty and the, the, the code that I, uh, copied from Jupyter Notebook. I'll pull, uh, paste it over here. We don't want anything that's um, after including schema. So we don't want the schema. We have already have the data. So we don't need that. I'm going to get rid of this uh, comma as well. And the only other thing that you need to change is this uh, name of the data set. By default, it has to be called data set. So I'm going to call that as a data set. And then I will click on this um, you click on this repair button, which is really handy. So click on this repair button. And now the only thing we need to change here is right now, this is sales and then click on this. So now if I go back, now you will see that we have created the visual that we um, wanted. In this case, uh, the visual is not exactly what uh, you need to create for the uh, for the challenge, um, but that's how I would uh, create this. Um, if we use the right data type and right uh, right data at the right hierarchy, um, it should work just fine as is. 
So let me get rid of this. And uh, now even in Power BI, for example, this is completely zoomable. You can zoom in, zoom out, and then do whatever you want. It interacts with uh, the slicer as well. So we can click on the slicer. If I create on, select the data point here, it uh, cross highlights and filters the data in your uh, visual as well. Um, now, the only th other thing that we need to do is create the bar chart for which I'll go back to Jupyter Notebook. And all I have to do now is just copy this. And what do we want to create? We want to create a bar chart. So that's mark bar. And on the x-axis is actually, x-axis should have sales. So let's just copy this or maybe it would be better if I just do x. And on the y-axis is actually the region. So that is region and it is ordinal type, right? So let's do that. Yep. So we created that. Same thing, view source, go here, copy, go to Power BI. And in this case, I want my sales. So go to sales and I want my region. So I'll take the region, drop it here, go to edit, create an empty visual first copy paste. We don't want the data that's already in Power BI. So I'll get rid of the data. And we want to rename the name of the data set to be data set. So data set, click on the repair button. And then we just need to rename this. I don't like, okay. Okay, so this is all good. Do this. And now we can just do it like how uh, we wanted. We can add custom properties to this if you wanted. If you want to create the custom, um, add different color to this, you can easily do that in um, in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so yeah, so this is how I would create it. The, the power behind this method is that you can customize all the visual using the Altair's, um, using Altair's uh, uh, API, uh, which you can actually, if you go to, so for example, this one, right? There is an Altair gallery and you pretty much just, you know, anything that you want, you can just use that as your starting template. Um, and anything that you see here, um, all of that can be completely done in, um, in Power BI. So you would just use one of these visuals uh, as a starting point and then create that in a Jupyter notebook with some, with some sample data, delete the data and import, the, uh, import that uh, code into Jupyter, uh, into Power BI and then build it. Now as a bonus, if you want to, um, you can also actually, uh, so let's go here. So, so now these are two different uh, visuals, right? So let's call this as line and let's call this as bar. If you want to combine these two, it's very easy. We can just go to V concat, and then what do we want to concat? Line and a bar. And now these two visuals are combined together. So they, this and this becomes combined together. And now same thing. You just copy the source, copy this, get rid of the data, rename the, uh, the columns that you want, and now this is completely importable into your uh, Power BI file, and then you can use it directly from there. So I hope uh, you found this helpful. Um, I will be doing a session on how I use Jupyter Notebook in my own Power BI uh, data, uh, not data flow, but in my Power BI workflow. Um, and it's uh, it will be in September. So if you follow me uh, on Twitter, keep an eye on the date, and I'll share the links uh, with you at that point. Thank you.